Hello and welcome to the latest video from Humbrol showing you how to use our new range of weathering powders. In this video we are going to show you a very simple technique for weathering your steam locomotives. This is the Thompson B1 from Hornby and we are also going to weather the coal tender that comes with it. The simplest way to use weathering powders is by applying them directly to the surface of the model that you wish to weather straight from the pot using the paintbrush. Normally a matte finish is the best for this but this is the Hornby factory finish which is almost satin in its appearance and if we look closely you will see that the weathering powders from Humboldt are still sticking to that surface. Weathering powders which are applied in this fashion aren't resilient to handling and will come off if you touch them. That's not a worry at the moment because all we want to do is get the dust effects onto the locomotive and then we'll fix it down later with a spray varnish. One of the biggest advantages of applying weathering powders in this fashion is that because the powders aren't fixed you can mix the colours on the surface of the model and also manipulate them with a brush moistened with normal tap water to create various streaking effects. These kind of effects would have turned up anywhere where there was rain or condensation which would run down the sides of the vehicle and bring the dust with it. By using short vertical strokes of the moistened brush followed up by some reapplication of the dry powder you can quickly gain the effect of the dust having built up and then been washed downwards. By cleaning the brush after every pass you are also removing some of the weathering powder which means that you can have complete control over your overall effect and take powder off as well as add powder on. Here you can see the powders lifting and then being wiped away. With a good layer of weathering powder on the upper portion of the locomotive now it's time to weather the moving parts and the running gear of the vehicle. There are some pretty important things to remember when you're weathering down here. These are the parts which are moving and they're lubricated. Weathering powders may cause some of this oil to seep out. It's also essential that you keep surfaces which are in contact with the track free and clear of any varnish or weathering powder. In particular these areas where the brass contacts meet with the wheels they need to be kept absolutely clear or the loco is not going to move. With those few important safety factors in mind it's time to get the weathering powders onto the lower portion of the locomotive. The same technique is used to grind the colours into the model surface only a little bit more care is taken where the powders are applied. When weathering behind wheels try to keep the weathering powders just to the outer three quarters of the wheels diameter. Go too close to the hub and you risk pushing weathering powders into the moving parts of the locomotive. If you do find that you've weathered over the wheels accidentally a brush moistened with thinners followed by a clean cotton bud will clean up any mess. Weathering powders don't just add colour, they also add texture. Here I'm adding some of the smoke coloured weathering powder which is the same colour as the locomotive to basically flatten off the model and give it an overall dusty appearance. This complements the brake dust and the grime pretty well and gives the whole model a very weather beaten look. A touch of white weathering powders mixed with some of the dark earth shade can replicate the ashes which have come from the smoke box at the front of the locomotive. With all the weathering powders in place and now that we are happy with the finish it's time to use some Humbrol acrylic spray varnish in matte effect to seal it all in. Normally sprayed at about 20 centimeters, that would just wash away all the weathering powders. Why not try misting the varnish on from a distance of about 60 centimeters and shake the can vigorously and give it a quick layer of varnish. I'll show you again on the coal tender exactly what I did shaking the can vigorously and giving it a quick spray just mists the surface with enough varnish to hold those weathering powders firmly down allowing you to handle the locomotive safely without your weathering wearing away. That matte finish is also a great base to apply another layer of weathering powders over the top 
should you wish to expand on the finish that you've already achieved. With that dry and dusty finish in place, why not add some visual interest and take some Humbro gloss coat and apply it in a few areas underneath the plumbing on your locomotive to represent an accumulation of either rainwater or condensation or maybe even a few small leaks. It's only a small finishing touch but it does help to break up the monotony of using dust and dry effects on their own. With all that varnish and weathering powder flying around I'm pretty sure that we've got somewhere we didn't want it to go. By running the loco upside down like this we can use a cotton bud which has been soaked in thinners to make absolutely sure that all those running surfaces are free from any unwanted dirt. You can see here how much is coming off those wheels. This would have surely interfered with the running of the locomotive as soon as I placed it on the layout. Once everything's all dry, I'm pretty sure that this is going to run beautifully and it's going to look great on the rails. And off she goes, nice and smooth with no interference from the weathering powders. Enjoy weathering your own locomotives. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again soon.